Hello from Ohio and welcome. Well, the pumpkins are on the porch and my wife has gotten the sweaters out. That can only mean that it's almost time for Halloween. This year, I've got a fun ghost that seems to float over its gravestone. It's not paranormal or magic that makes it float, basic physics. Let's learn about the physics together and how to make it, this time on Just Make It With Josh. Now, I enjoy Halloween. I've made a few different custom decorations over the last couple years. This year, I wanted to do something with less electronics and try to better use the Blender 3D modeling software and be a little more artistic, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to make. Early one Sunday morning, I was thinking about something completely unrelated to Halloween when my mind started wandering to these tensegrity structures. You know, I'd seen those cool floating tables in the past that they seem to defy gravity when you look at them. You know, at first glance, it doesn't seem to make sense how the top of the table could be held up by just some strings. But I watched this Stephen Mould video and he did a whole video explaining how 10 secretary structures work. I put a link in the description and I highly encourage you to go check his video out. He goes into a lot more depth than I understand. Now, while thinking about those cool floating tables, I thought maybe I could use that concept to make it look like a ghost was floating. And thus, the idea for this project was born. Now, let's start by taking a look at what I had in mind. Now, as you can see, what I wanted was simply a ghost that appears to be floating out of its grave. But how does it float? Look, I'm no physicist, but let me give it a try and see if maybe we can understand it together. These tensegrity structures work because all the strings are under tension when the ghost is up here in its top floating position. The key is that the center of gravity for the ghost needs to be positioned above the top of the grave and between the ghost's chest and the grave, kind of somewhere in this area back here. When the center of gravity is kind of in this area right here, it means the weight is all pushing down on the bottom of the ghost, stretching tight the string between the top of the grave and the bottom of the ghost. And because the center of gravity is so far back, it causes the ghost to try to want to fall backwards. But it can't because that force is pulling the line between the hands and the base uh, tight. When this happens, it makes the ghost appear to just float above the grave. Importantly, there are still ways to move the ghost. For example, you can move the ghost forward. Of course, once the center of gravity crosses past the top of the grave, the strings on the hand will no longer be under tension and the whole thing will fall apart. In fact, the moment any of the strings are not under tension, the whole thing falls apart. Now that we know how it works, let's build it. First things first, let's print out the parts. Be sure to print out two of the blocks when you go to print everything. You'll need supports on the ghost, but not on the base. Next up, we need to paint the parts. I painted the ghost's eyes black, and on the base, I painted the ground green and the grave gray. Now for the part that's a bit more complicated. We need to start by taking a length of fishing line and threading it through the hole at the top of the gravestone. Not using a standard fishing line knot. If you're not familiar with that knot, it's worth Googling to see how it's done. Even if you never intend to fish, with monofilament fishing line, it's a helpful knot to know. Next, I found laying the ghost on its back and threading the line through a hole in the bottom of the ghost to be easiest. You only want it to be an inch or two in length so that your ghost's bottom hangs about halfway between the grave, top of the grave and the base here. If it's too high, it won't work. Next, tie another length of line to the hands of the ghost and thread the other through the top of the base. Then thread the line through one of the little blocks. What I did next was to put the ghost in place, keeping the previous line tight, and then pull the first line from the hand mostly tight. Put the block right against the base, then tie a stopper knot so the block won't come off. This should give you close to the right length. You should be able to snap the block into the channel under the base in position that will have about the right amount of tension. Just repeat on the other side and you're done. I like to leave the line just slightly loose as it gives a lot of movement to the ghost. As you can see, you can touch it and it will wobble quite a bit. 
And there you have it, a fun floating ghost that doesn't rely on magic but plain old physics. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, please push that like button and subscribe to my channel, and comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time on Just Making It with Josh.